Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crilly. I want to try something kind of different with this video. I'm going to do a little trip down memory lane, back to past artwork that I've done. This one dates all the way back to 1991 or 92 when I was living in Japan teaching English, and I created this comic book story called The Beast That Ate Morioka. I'm going to zoom in here so you can see the detail a little bit more. Yes, even way back then I was kind of crazy about adding details. Uh, to my illustrations. And I had a lot of fun doing this one. I think it was the first um, really professional looking thing that I ever did. Let's move on to another one. Now this is a back cover artwork from my Akiko comic book series. You're going to see a lot of artwork from this series because it really dominated what I was doing when I first got published. In fact, let's move on to another piece from that series. So this is a front cover, also from the Akiko comic book series, and um, Mr. Biba here, you can see, very cartoony looking. I thought it might be interesting for people to see some of the different styles I've used over the years. And even within the Akiko series, there were lots of different cartooning styles going on. Here's another piece of uh, front cover artwork. You can see it has more of a uh, action-adventure kind of a vibe to it. I think I'll push this uh, up a little so you can see the lower part of the artwork. This was all done mainly with watercolor, colored pencil, that kind of stuff. Um, still my favorite way of adding color, though I, I do uh, use the computer, you know, Photoshop, uh, especially in Brody's Ghost for those uh, cover illustrations. This is a back cover illustration uh, that I did, and uh, you know, at that time I was really interested in children's book illustration. This is meant to resemble the uh, Winnie the Pooh illustrations uh, by E. H. Shepard, and um, throughout that whole series, I was continually uh, trying my hand at different styles, uh, especially in the children's book realm. Speaking of different styles, this was a page where I challenged myself to draw my character Spuckler in a number of different styles. And this illustration right here, actually, I think, is the first time that I tried to draw in a manga style. Uh, this was back in the late 90s, long before uh, I decided to actually try to use uh, such styles uh, for an entire project. Now, uh, this is a kind of a change of pace. I think you would call this a portfolio piece. Uh, I was trying to get illustration work for, like, magazines and stuff, doing caricatures. Of course, Jack Nicholson here. Uh, never did work out. I never was hired for that kind of work. Um, but I thought you would enjoy seeing my attempt uh, to, to become a, a caricature artist at one stage in my career. Where I did find uh, illustration work eventually was Nickelodeon Magazine. Uh, they hired me for a number of really fun projects, including this one, uh, which was uh, a sort of parody version of the Harry Potter um, uh, book art. The American uh, cover art, I don't think people outside of America will necessarily recognize this, uh, but the idea was to do Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone Age or something like that. And I had fun imitating the uh, illustration style, uh, again, of the American artist who did the cover art for the Harry Potter series. Back to the Akiko stuff. This was one of the back covers. Uh, Beatles fans will, of course, recognize this as uh, the Abbey Road cover. I inserted my characters in place of the Fab Four. Um, but one of the great things about the Akiko series is I really had the freedom to do almost anything I felt like doing. Uh, and that resulted in a lot of playful illustrations like this one. Uh, a minute ago I showed you this illustration that was my first manga style illustration. Well, I continued with that kind of thing, and this was uh, me doing Akiko as uh, Kiki from Kiki's Delivery Service. I had fun trying to do this as best I could in the style of cell animation, as if it actually came from an animated film. Another uh, back cover illustration. Uh, this time I was doing a tribute to uh, my neighbor Totoro, or Tonari no Totoro. And uh, just basically, again, doing that uh, classic bus stop scene, but dropping in Akiko and my character Poog uh, in place of the characters from the film. And finally, here's another illustration from the Akiko series featuring one of my favorite locations that I invented uh, for that fantasy world. It was the idea of the upside-down city of Galarondo, a city that was built on the underside of a cliff so that all of the buildings are uh, upside down, but the people who live in the city are right side up, which uh, captured my imagination, and I kept coming back to it again and again anytime I could work it into another story. Um, but let's go ahead and end this. My apologies that this is not a how to draw video, but I will be back uh, with a proper how to draw video next Friday.
And uh, let me know what you thought of this. If you enjoyed this, there's I got stacks of artwork, and I could certainly periodically uh, come back and, and do little videos like this uh, every now and again. But for now, let's end the video. Thank you so much for watching it. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another one real soon.